Hi everyone, well in an earlier video I took you through my process for this uh, attic conversion. We saw the drawings I created which helped me with the build. Well in this video I'll expand on that a bit and show you the steps that I take for all my designs to go from this to this and I'll use the uh, attic conversion example. So hi my name's Jeremy and after qualifying as an architect I've spent my entire career really buying, renovating and developing properties for the rental market, sometimes for selling and flipping and for Airbnb. And I'm here to share my experiences to help you build better things. Now you can of course just hire someone, an architect, a designer, a technician, a draftsman. Aside from the cost which can be quite a lot the fun of property developing is learning these uh, skills yourself and you can definitely reuse them and we all understand homes because we live in them on a daily basis. The great thing about SketchUp is that it's free and it's easy and it allows you to create 2D drawings like plans and sections which you need for, for your setting out from a 3D model. Now there's nothing stopping you drawing your own design by hand, old style. But in order to really get the benefit, I always draw it in 3D, kind of like building the building virtually, brick by brick, element by element. Not only does it make the building process a lot clearer to you, it quite often shows up a lot of problems, especially in 3D weird things like attic conversions where you've got things sloping all left, right and center. But please let me know what design process and drawing software that you use and what works for you. And I'll leave it down in the comment and let's have a conversation about it. So with all that said, let's jump into my process and my workflow. You can either survey the property and I'll probably have a video about that below or you can steal a plan and you can get plans of your property from your title deeds or you can download them from a sales brochure which is what I am doing here. I'm just pulling out the plan that the sales people did and making a PDF of it or a PNG I think it was in this case. Just remember to take a few key measurements in the property itself so you can scale the downloaded plan correctly. Now that you've got your plan it's a case of importing that plan into your chosen CAD drawing software and as I said before I prefer SketchUp. So just a, a side note here that this isn't really a full tutorial in SketchUp itself. There's loads of stuff on YouTube about that, but I can tell you it is really intuitive and you do not need a lot of work to get a, a, a firm grip of an understanding of SketchUp. Anyway, so back to the import. We're going to import the PNG file as an image and we're going to put it on our ground plane and this is going to be the data for tracing over the walls in 2D using a combination of the rectangular tool and the line tool and we're going to try and do it as close to scale as you can estimate using and in my case I've used this scale box in the bottom a 10 meter scale box and I know the building's 11 meters approximately so I can get it quite close to that. I won't worry too much about it at the moment because I'm going to scale it exactly in a minute. I also won't worry too much about the doors and windows at this point. I'm more interested in getting the overall walls and form drawn at this stage. So with the walls drawn, I can project them up using the extrude tool to the height that I will have taken from my key survey measurements. And now we're starting to get a 3D representation of what the building really is. So rather than the, just these walls in 2D, they're actually 3D objects inside the plan, which enables me to create plans and sections from it. Once I've drawn them, I'll group the walls into an entity. And with SketchUp, remember always to group your entities before you move on to the next element. So I'll group the walls as an element, I'll group the proposed walls as an element, I'll group the windows as an element, I'll group the proposed windows as an element and so on. So with the walls in place I'll get into the roof, I'll start with a plan to get the geometry correct and then extrude up the ridge to create the volume. You can use plugins for this but 
I just try and I just do it myself, you know, you spend your life downloading plugins when you can probably do the thing yourself. I'll like screw up the ridge and then I'll look at the hips, that'll help me with my hips and then I'll just walk around the roof in that way. So now I've got my roof in place and I'll start to create the ceiling joists and rafters and I'll get those sizes using my survey information and I'll create each one of these as an individual element. And that is going to help me when I get to my pricing and materials scheduling, but I will get to that in another video. With my model of the existing in place and all the elements there, I'll then go back to the drawing board and start designing my layout, just sketching lots of different ideas and proposals because I've got my dimensions now. And once I'm happy, I'll come back to the 3D model and start the detailed process of adding in the proposed elements into the existing model. All at actual scale and with all the tolerances and other things that I can think of as if I was actually building it. And then finally, once I have it exactly the way I want, I'll use the section cut tools within SketchUp to create plans and sections in 2D where I can then continue to iterate the design and go back and forward into the 3D model and then I can add dimensions and notes and further elements such as electrical and schedule annotations all of which I'm going to need for my building permissions when I submit the drawings to my local authority with this part complete I can then begin to look at the costing which you can see in my other video the other drawing tool I use and love and which has sort of replaced my lifetime habit of pen and paper is drawing on my iPad with a pencil. So check out that in the link below or on the screen. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it and please subscribe. It really helps if you've got any questions. Please just leave a comment down below. With all that said, thanks a lot for listening and I'll see you in the next one.